Welcome to the Alchemy of Ascension Season 5, Activating Star Seeds, Walk Ins, and the New Human of the Golden Age. I'm your host, Washela Sananda, and today it's my pleasure to present Dr. John Ryan. Welcome, John. Hi, Washela. Thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation. <laughs> I am too. We have some interesting things to discuss today. <laughs> um, but first, I'd love to have everyone join us with a sh short alignment process so that we can really get focused and present for this conversation. So if you're in a place where it's safe, go ahead and close your eyes and tune in to your breath deepening the breath into the belly. And as you're breathing, bring your awareness into your heart center, finding the light within your heart and feeling that light glowing and expanding out around your chest and out around your body. And then feel that light going up above your head and all the way up into central sun, making contact with the heart light of central sun and bringing that energy down into the crown of your head, spreading down into every energy center of the body and then continuing down into the center of the earth, the heart light, that core light in the center of the earth making contact there, and then bringing that light up into the base of your spine, into every energy center. And now join those energies together from above, below, and within, creating a holy trinity of light where we are protected and connected and bringing more focus, presence, harmony, and alignment so that you may receive whatever's in your highest good in this conversation today. And breathe one more time and come on back. Thank you for joining me in that. And now I'd love to share a little bit about what John has been up to. Dr. John Ryan is a board certified physician, energy healer, speaker, and visionary. His life was transformed by a series of mystical events that led him to discover the validity of a spiritual and energy-based healing paradigm. In recent years, his work has led him to the mystical threshold of the quantum basis of DNA, its integral connection to the human spirit and the potential of this knowledge to support human evolution. He is the author of Unity Field Healing Volume 1, Foundations of Energy Medicine and Quantum Healing, and also the founder of Unity Field Healing, a quantum process of conscious DNA activation. John's work is supported by Syrian Blue White Collective, who channel monthly transmissions to support human ascension. So... Everything in there is what uh, this, this summit and this season is all about. So I can't wait to dive in with you, John. And I'd love to just start with your origin story and a little bit of your background. And I love it when um, an allopathic physician goes um, spiritual or quantum or whatever you want to call it. So <laughs> let's, let's hear a little bit about what happened to have that transformation happen for you. Sure thing. I guess goes rogue. <laughs> um, in a good way <laughs> in a good way uh so thank you michelle for that beautiful introduction and meditation the energy was very uh, profound in that so i'm excited to to have this talk together um yeah so my history i am a physician by training i am a medical doctor who um kind of went through my traditional you know university-based education and the story for me was as I was about to finish my medical training back in the late 1980s, 1987, 88, 89, I started having some unusual energy experiences. And so what would happen is I would go to bed at night and my body would start vibrating or, you know, I'd have unusual energy surges through my body and become really kind of hypersensitive in my energy. 
where I would see energetic events happening around me, like light around people or these kinds of things. And I started having spontaneous out-of-body experiences. And I would float around the room and be able to travel. I could pick a destination and travel to that place, uh, you know, just through pure consciousness. And, and as all this was happening, it was intriguing, but it was also a little alarming because I didn't really have any kind of a background or framework for understanding. And uh, of course, today there's so much information available on these things and, you know, people can access that readily on the internet and so, and so forth. But back in the day, you relied on books and there weren't that many. So I really didn't have uh, a go-to source of information. And what happened was I had this really profound synchronicity one day where I was becoming nervous about the experiences and I thought, what's happening to me? And in fact, I started to think, is something wrong with me? Like, you know, do I need to go for an examination or have a CT scan or something? Like I, I thought perhaps something um, is happening that I need to know about. And, but I didn't feel that in my heart, I really felt the experience was kind of meant to be, even though it wasn't something I was seeking. And I was prompted to go to a bookstore one day. And it was a, a new age kind of a bookstore one I had never been in prior to that point in time. And as I walked in the store, I was overwhelmed. It was like this kind of an old mansion style house and every room had books of different kinds. and. One of the books was about energy and healing and new age type material. And so I was drawn there. And as I walked in the room, there was, and my eyes panned across the room, there was a book that literally magnified on the shelf. And like today, you know, when you run your cursor on your computer over an icon and it gets bigger, so it recognizes you're there. This book kind of did this in real time. And I, I went over and took it off the shelf and it was called The Spontaneous Awakening of Kundalini by Gopi Krishna. And so I started reading the book and the story of Gopi Krishna's life and some of the experiences he had. And I understood immediately why I was drawn to it because it was different, but a reflection of what I was living in my own personal experience. And I encountered a second book that started to glow on the bookshelf, like it had a, a light inside. <laughs> and it was a book by Lee Carroll and Cryon that talked about the new times, the energy of the new human and the new times. And so I took these books and I, you know, checked out at the bookstore and started to read them. And it was really the beginning for me of what became a pathway of discovery of things, energy, healing, uh, consciousness expansion, understanding the energy changes that are taking place on the planet, the ascension journey, the integration of our higher dimensional consciousness, our starseed origins, these kinds of things. And one thing kind of led to another, and then the rest is the story of my life, I guess, all the things that I explored and discovered along the way. But in the act of all of that, I also started having really profound meditations and sometimes visions in the meditations where I'd be taught things from another dimension, if you will. They would appear in my meditations, kind of like a dreamlike vision, but they would have teachings in them and they would show me things about human DNA, about healing, about the relationship between this quantum DNA that we all carry that connects us to our soul and the energy expression of who we are as human beings. And, you know, the, the things we're more familiar with, like the energy bodies and the chakras and all these types of things and how the whole story fits together and how this is such a special time on the planet because of what's happening in the ascension journey, which I'm sure we'll talk about as we go forward a little bit. So um, that's kind of how it began for me. And then, as you said, it was kind of an awakening from a, an allopathic framework and kind of an uninvited thing. Like I didn't really, I wasn't a spiritual seeker or someone pursuing this kind of information or experience, but I realized looking retrospectively that it was in my soul to do this. It was something that I kind of knew before I was born. And when the time came, it would happen and I would be okay with it. But that doesn't mean, of course, it was easy. It was very challenging to, to live these things. I, I kind of make light of it as I look backwards, but it was challenging as everybody faces when they go through these experiences in their life to come to terms with this, to develop an understanding, uh, to make peace with it, and to allow it to support you in the role of becoming the person you're meant to be or the soul you're meant to express while we're alive in this incarnation. 
And, uh, but now it brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> and uh, I love to share with people too, and to teach and bring things to life to help us understand the beauty of what's happening in this process. And even though it's very tumultuous on the planet right now in lots of ways, there's a magical underlay to everything that's happening. And the future is in very good hands. And uh, we're heading to a destiny that's magical, you know, according to the modern frame of consciousness, but a very beautiful evolution will unfold. And so just to bring all that into awareness and help people develop tools and understanding to, to support that journey is really what I love to do the most. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I love how you, um, you know, the, the bookstore, that's how so many people, you know, began in the metaphysical bookstore. And I've even heard of books literally falling out in front of someone. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, that's what we had instead of the internet back then. So exactly. that's how it worked. Now websites <laughs> pop up. But um, I, I also love that you chose to pursue that and go with it rather than when you started questioning, like, is this, you know, is this crazy? Is this too much? I'm sure with your background, you were really, you know, like there were probably some concerns, but instead of stepping away from it, you leaned in. And, you know, I, I think um, it's such a, a beautiful thing that you did that and that you share about it. And I would love it if all of the physicians would, would go that direction and really give credence to the unseen and the mystical in the world of energy. That seems to be what we're really lacking in, you know, allopathic medicine. Um, in, so thank you. That was a, You're welcome. Yeah. I'm glad you did that. <laughs> so, yeah, I know that you you talk about the ascension. You just mentioned it, and there are a lot of kind of different ideas and perceptions about what is the ascension. Would you share your perspective of what's happening with the ascension? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's a wonderful question, and I think a very important foundation for these kinds of discussions because. So many people are living experiences that don't make sense to them in the traditional terms of the 3D world. And it's part of a process that is so important, I think, and foundational for the future, and yet often misunderstood or mischaracterized in different ways. And so I, I often begin a discussion around the Ascension um, back at a time when I was a little boy. And I remember when I was about seven or eight years old, I had this experience. I was with my friend and her mother. And we were looking at a book called The Encyclopedia of the Future. <laughs> and it was about, you know, bubble cities and space age technology and all this kind of stuff. And as we were looking through the book, my friend's mother asked me a question and she said, you know, John, what do you think the future will be? And it's such an amazing thing to ask a child because you're, you know, your creativity is unbridled and you're not afraid to say what you think. <laughs> and so, but I felt this energy just come over me. It was like this big, massive energy field kind of descended on me. And I stood up like I was the emperor. And I said, you know, there are two possible futures for this planet. And I said, if I am still alive in 1998, I will know that we have chosen the good one. And so I don't know where that came from. It just kind of happened. And I had forgotten about that experience until I started going through these energy changes in the late 80s. And I remembered having that moment. And the reason I think that's so precious looking backwards is we, we all know in our soul when we're born that th there's a potential in this lifetime that's really unique and peculiar. And it's there before we come, before we incarnate as human beings, but we tend to forget it, of course, immediately as we, you know, come to life on the planet. <laughs> but it's there. We all know, really, there's a place inside of all of us where we know the truth of this. And so that was just an expression of it being there long before I knew in conscious terms what it meant. And so when I started awakening, I started to realize that there is a change taking place on the planet and that the earth had arrived at a point of energy where there were two possible futures. There was one where we would be mature enough, if you will, spiritually speaking, to be able to evolve into a different kind of a civilization. 
And if we chose that pathway, we would go through some very trying times and a time of great transformation and upheaval in ways, but we would build a new world, what I would call today an ascended civilization. And the second option was that we wouldn't be quite ready to do that. And if that was the case, the world would have had to go through an involution, you know, like a breakdown and a demise, if you will, and kind of start in a new energy. And I believe that that's happened historically. Like we talk about the myths of Atlantis and the myths of Lemuria, but they're not really myths at all. They're actually memories for some people. And we all remember a time when those things did happen on the earth. And so those civilizations went into declines for one reason or another. And so we're at a point where the earth has this new magical potential to step into what we would call an ascended consciousness. And to live as an ascended civilization is a really magical thing, but it's a, it's a humanity that would become self-aware and aware of its divine origins and spiritual essence, and that we would begin to live a life that's founded in that reality, not aspiring to meet that reality or to become worthy of that reality, but to become an embodiment of that reality. And so that's the path that the earth has taken. So people speak of the harmonic convergence in 1987, and that's kind of the time when this measurement took place to see if the earth would be ready to go forward. And because we were, and the, the outcome, I guess, of that survey <laughs> was that we were ready, the, the earth was, the preparations were begun to get the earth ready to move into the energy of what was about to come. And so the magnetic grid of the earth had to be strengthened and developed in a way to allow it to begin receiving new influxes of energy, really high vibrational energy that's connected to stellar knowledge and galactic beings and all kinds of things that we can talk about. But the, the energy was about to begin to flow into the earth. And so the earth had to be prepared and in being prepared, it set it up for what we call the 2012 date, you know, the December 21st, 2012, when we really stepped over the threshold of entering this new time. And so since that point in time, we're living in a world that's slowly integrating this new light. And the light is creating really positive things and also really challenging things by nature of that design. Because we're living in a transition where the old world is slowly dematerializing, like it's literally evaporating <laughs> or disintegrating, while the energy of the new is being brought into form through inspired human beings. And so it's, it's more than just a human experience, it's a planetary experience. The earth is also going through this ascension process. But humanity, as part of the holism of the planet, is going through this ascension process in a very conscious way. And so there are people who are being triggered awake. They're having personal experiences of awakening of all different kinds. I'm sure we'll hear all kinds of magical stories from some of you know, the other speakers and many people in the audience will have all their own stories of how they're walking this pathway. But it's a pathway that's leading us to a much more luminous, inspired, high vibrational way of being alive a planet founded in peace, a consciousness that works cooperatively and understands its oneness or its unity with, with not just with each other, but with everything created, the planet herself. And so as we move into that kind of a new reality, there's a foundation that has to be built. And then on that foundation, there'll be all kinds of things that can come into being or be created through the human expressions, you know, the creative human expressions that will allow us to build a world where, that we would dream of, you know, a world that's really based in the foundation of peace, where technology is used to support life and not destroy it, where uh, people work together for the collective good of all members of humanity, for the nature kingdom, for the earth herself. All these things are factored into every decision that's made by any, you know, corporation or government or group of people and an empowered sense, an autonomous sense of being a light being. Everyone knows their origin is in this place of light and that our purpose in being here is to express the creativity of that light in our own magical ways. And so you can imagine the world that will flow into being when that's really how we all are. And that's really where we're headed. 
but right now it's it's a little tough because we're going through this dismantling time as well and so much of what has to disappear i guess to allow that vibration to hold is is being washed away or kind of disintegrated from the system so it's a little bit more of a practical take on ascension because we can talk about integrating higher dimensional light fields and the diamond light body and all of these things which are truisms they're things that are definitely happening and people are having intergalactic communication and talking to light beings from other planets and all these things and as magical of all, as all that is, it's still very practical what's happening. And so I love to bring it down to earth in that way so people understand the importance of it, the, not just the mystical side of it, but the purpose of the mysticism and, and what it can bring to life in the world. And the sooner we get on board with it, the sooner we do it. So let's get busy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. Thank you for sharing about you know your concept of ascension. Um, one of the things that you mentioned in there that I think is super relevant, I, I want to kind of dig into it a little bit more because you're not the only one on, you know, in all these interviews, several other people have touched on the concept of um, in the ascended earth and even humanity right now is at a choice point with technology and, you know, with AI and all of these things that are starting to happen. Um, numerous of the speakers have talked about a technology um, that is supportive of the earth or, you know, is, is uplifting to humanity and the earth versus one that is destructive and ends up destroying the earth and essentially humanity. And apparently there's a timeline where that has happened, um, you know, in so future us are kind of coming back and saying, let's do it differently. You have an opportunity here this time. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I would love for you to just say a little bit more of what that looks like to you. And because I think it's critical right now as people are sort of, in that battle of, do I turn the TV on and watch the news? Do I spend countless hours behind my computer or do I, you know, like, what do I do with the technology? There are things like Neuralink coming out and all of these technologies, right? That are they good or are they bad? Are they supportive or destructive? So can you dissect that a little bit about your concept of technology and how it's to use a, it? <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful question and, and a mysterious question because we, we're, we're all aware something is happening with technology technology and I guess we're not because we don't see the future it's in fullness it's hard to sometimes appreciate what's happening or to know if it's a good or a bad thing I guess but I kind of see technology at this point it, the way I would look at a knife like for example there's a knife you hold it in your hand you could use that to remove a tumor from a body and really help someone surgically by using the knife, or you could use it to wound them or injure them or even destroy their life. And so the knife itself is not good or bad, like money is not good or bad, technology is not good or bad, it's the consciousness using the tools that becomes important. And so we're at a time where there's still a large framework of duality thinking that is part of the human experience. And so technology can still potentially be used in those two orientations. But as humanity integrates itself into this future that we're talking about, this higher vibrational, the energy and consciousness of the future, we'll clarify those things. And we would never allow certain kinds of usages of things. So, for example, if a human being is really living in an ascended unity consciousness, they're not going to turn around and kill somebody or hurt somebody with that knife. They just know better. And so part of it will clear itself up in that way. But technology is an important part of the future in another way, because technology, it's kind of using consciousness and energy systems to create certain energy frameworks that allow certain things to be possible. And so, for example, if we look at the internet, we can say, oh, it's bad in all these ways, or social media is bad in all these ways. And, and it can be if it's used with low level consciousness, but at the same time, when it's used it, with a higher level of consciousness, it's a blessing. And so, for example, today we can have this conversation and we can participate in a global event through the internet. 
And that wouldn't have been possible without the technology that can create that. So the evolution of that technology was timely. It was meant to happen now to help humanity disseminate knowledge, to have experiences, to be able to reveal the truth when it's being hidden or obscured in different ways. And so the true blessing of that technology is that. But of course, people can also use that technology to create confusion and see deception and all the things we're witnessing in different ways as those things happen on the planet. And so that drives every human being to have moments of discernment and to be able to reflect on their relationship with these things and to make personal decisions about how they are aligning with that outcome. And so I believe that's the part of the great test of these times, like everybody has to learn how to make those discernments within their own being and learn how to trust the guidance that comes from inside of them as they interface with these different energies and experiences. In the big picture, I think a lot of it will be taken care of. The, the potential bad outcomes, I think, will be taken care of more by the evolution of consciousness in a rapid way. And the, but the technology, I still believe, is an important part of where we're headed. So I think it's meant to be here. It's meant to be utilized. It's meant to be developed. And the way we apply it, I think, will refine itself as we move forward and our consciousness grows. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And thank you for unpacking that a little bit more. It really, you know, it all comes down to consciousness, doesn't it? And our awareness and our also our addictive um, habits yeah. as humans. How much are we, you know, escaping our what's going on here, our embodiment, <laughs> and how much are we being conscious about how we're using it? And that's always a personal balance to to explore. Um, yeah, so you, one of the things that I'm thrilled about that you are, you know, really into is the DNA and uh, conscious DNA activation is, is something that you share about. So there's a part of that that you're talking about with the, the 24th chromosome. I'd love for you to share about that and kind of unpack that concept for us. Sure, yeah. So it, it's interesting. As I started to learn about energy things, of course, foundationally, I was exposed to teachings on the chakra and some of the Eastern systems of healing, you know, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, these kinds of things that have an appreciation of the subtle or invisible aspect of the human body and human health and the role of consciousness and nutrition and all these kinds of things that impact the balance of energy in our body. And so as I started to understand that, I thought, oh, there's so much hidden in this. And this is where the answer lies in terms of healing, you know, exploring healing or finding new ways to help people achieve healing. But as I deepened in my own journey I, and started having these kinds of visions that I described, I started having a number of visions that were introducing me to this DNA system. And I thought, what, like, I didn't really have a framework for understanding what it was or why I was being shown this, but I kept notes, you know, whenever I would have experiences, I would write little things down. And, and I started to realize I was being shown the nature of the multidimensional field that's part of the human experience. And so in simple terms and in scientific terms, when we look at ourselves as human beings, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. But most of the mammary primates on the planet have 24. And so there's a peculiarity about human beings that to be, have this genetic design. And so there, scientists who have been kind of, you know, exploring archeological information and societal information from times gone by and the evolution of the human body and all this kind of stuff really face this mystical stump. Like they look at this and they say, it doesn't make sense why all of a sudden human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes. But there's a, a theory of thinking, mostly from esoteric thinkers or people who've had mystical experiences, that humanity is supported as a civilization by light civilizations from other star systems. So for example, the Pleiadians or the Syrians and so forth. And 
the beginning of humanity is tied to a seeding of consciousness or an integration of divine connection, if you will, or wiring up to a divine connection as part of its evolution. And from the things I've been shown and discovered, I believe that to be true. And so what science has discovered is that one of the chromosomes, the second chromosome, is actually a fused chromosome. It used to be two, and at some point along the way, it became one. And nobody knows why or how it happened. Like there's no science to say anything truly did happen. And lots of people have theories and ideas around it. But from the information I was shown, it's when humanity was ready to integrate its divinity. So in other words, the, if the earth was prepared as a planet that would one day hold an ascended civilization, the human body was developed to a certain level. And then something important had to happen. There had to be an integration of other energy into the DNA. And so what I've been shown through my visions is that this occurred through a Pleiadian seeding. There were Pleiadian mothers who came to the planet and brought this connection to humanity. And so in the act of doing that, the fused physical chromosome became a pair and there was another chromosome that was developed that is only, it only exists in a dimension above the physical. So it's a interdimensional, I guess, structure or a geometry of light that's just outside the 3D world. And the 24th chromosome is the name that I've been shown to use to describe it. I was originally calling it spiritual DNA and other things because I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing, but I was confirmatively shown in one of my meditations to call this the 24th chromosome. And the reason it's called that is because it is the missing pair. And it was created at a time when humanity was ready to begin to integrate this divinity in terms of its collective evolution. And so the 24th chromosome is a quantum structure and it exists at a plane of energy that's just outside the physical, like our etheric body would or our chakras do. And this chromosome is connected to our soul. So when we are incarnating on the planet each time, every time we're born to different parents. And so physically speaking, we have 23 pairs of DNA from two different parents each time we're born on the planet. But this overlay of the 24th chromosome is not dependent on that incarnation. It's woven to the soul. And it's how the soul makes its connection to the 23 pairs of chromosomes. And because it's a quantum structure, it's not just another pair that sits beside the other 23 it's an overlay. It's a, it's a chromosome that overlays all the other 23 chromosomes and the whole genetic makeup of each one of us as a person. And so every time we're going to be born on the planet, the soul brings information from its greater library of knowledge and experience, our Akashic records, if you will. And it will bring together composition of energy that's tailored to the incarnation a person is going to live. And so as a person is born on the planet each time, you're bringing energy, your soul is integrating with that little being, and you're going to have a lifetime in that body. But the energy of the soul is constant. It comes and goes through each incarnation, even though the lifetime passes, the soul is retained, and all the information and experience is held in this chromosome. And so... There's a whole history to it. In fact, there's a workshop that I've been prompted to develop specifically about this topic because it's such an important emerging piece of knowledge, I think, right now for healers and for people who are undergoing the Ascension experience. And so that's how I understand it. And so as we go through the Ascension process, one of the things that is happening is our communication with this structure, with this 24th chromosome, is being enhanced. And so as that happens, human beings have experiences like spontaneous healing, or they start having energy experiences, or they start having uh, mystical awakenings, or they remember past lifetimes where you know they remember being incarnated another point in time. Because that information is in you, but it's veiled until this communication starts to happen. And I'll often, kind of in a jokingly way, say to people, imagine it's 1953 and I'm going to ask you a question. 
how many people in the room remember a past lifetime? And people start to laugh and they say, nobody would say they had a past lifetime in 1953. People didn't even talk about those kinds of things. And yet, if I were sitting in the hospital and asked people that question at random, I bet at least five people in the room today would say they have a memory of a past lifetime in some way. And so there's a reason that's happening. There's a like there's an explanation for that. There has to be. And so, you know, based on my understanding of this energy and how it all works as a system, because it's rewiring, it's recalibrating, we're getting kind of reattuned to the greater energy of this chromosome. We're also exposed to the knowledge, the information, the lifetimes before where we had other experiences, other knowledge, other incarnational moments, uh, and sometimes things we have to heal that care we carry over from those lifetimes where the energy is still with us but hasn't been fully healed or integrated. And so there's a whole journey <laughs> of integration that's really specific to that awakening and that opening. And the work I do in healing is, is really around that. The, you know, the unity field healing work is really about helping people develop and strengthen this connection and then to begin to work in the energy field to bring healing or catalyze transformation, just making the process a little bit quicker or more powerful. And so that's how that's come into being in, in my frame of thinking. And so people have all kinds of different experiences and I think contribute to the knowledge and our understanding of that realm. And, uh, but the way it was shown to me was I think specific so I could understand how to work with the unity field healing process that subsequently came to light for me. And I was given a channel by Lee Carroll and Cryon uh, in 2019 when he told me that what I'm remembering now is the knowledge that was held in the Lemurian temples of rejuvenation or temple of rejuvenation. So he said, it's like you're reading the textbooks or the etheric knowledge, if you will, of what was understood in those days to be able to work with light fields and crystalline consciousness and so forth to bring healing and transformative connection through the energy system to create uh, health and balance and longevity. And so uh, it was kind of interesting to hear that. And it feels, it resonates as true in me because of the way it all unfolded and all the other bits and pieces of that puzzle. So. <laughs> yeah, fascinating. I, um, and I love the Lemurian, the whole world of Lemuria. I have I have past life memories from Lemuria and Excellent. I've done a lot of channeling of um, the new Lemuria and this, which is also part of the ascended earth, you know, Absolutely. and it's, it's a, it's a beautiful place and we're creating, recreating it. I suppose to say now. <laughs> so I love how all of these things kind of weave together and all of the different sort of characters in the play get different pieces and different roles to bring in to the yeah. new Lemuria, the new earth. Um, and clearly you've got um, some great, a great piece of the, of the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you work with people, you do you help them activate that, what you're calling the 24th chromosome yeah. and get attuned to that so they can work with that energy and that information? It's, it's exactly what's happening. So the work takes a format where it's done in three sessions. And the first two sessions are attunement sessions. One is an attunement to the DNA axis itself, like to help a person really catalyze that connection, that expansion that comes with this energetic integration. And then secondly, is an attunement to a light pattern called the unity field healing template. It's like a quantum structure that looks like a collection of yin and yang circles all interwoven together. And when I'm working in the process, this light field comes into the quantum space within the DNA. And it's like a recalibrating tool, I guess, for lack of a better word. But as it's active, it kind of works in this multi-dimensional field of the DNA to help restrand or restring the connections. And then the work continues with session three, which is more intentional work. So if a person is encountering something they want to work on specifically, you know, towards healing or integration or something they're hoping to develop, you know, like um, 
a lot of work is healing focused. It's helping us get through difficult experiences or difficult times, you know, relationships, physical things, psychological things, uh, stress, anxiety, all this stuff. But then people also get to a point where they want to start to birth new. And so the work then really focuses on helping people integrate a connection or an aspect of knowledge or a historical wisdom that they may have that supports them in going forward in a new and an empowered way. So it can work in a healing orientation or it can work in a creative developmental orientation. And the session can bring a focused intention into the work and then the energy is responding to that intention as it works with you through the healing session. So people have had some really profound and beautiful experiences in in the work and uh so that's the essence of the work i could it's a whole discussion unto itself we could go into okay. some more of the details and a lot of my work today is not so much in doing the sessions it's in teaching practitioners to do the sessions so the work is expanding and we have um 300 about 360 i think practitioners now around the world who are starting to bring this work to life and so it's growing a little bit every year and there are new practitioners really doing the work and bringing it to people. So it's a beautiful wave of new energy and healing power that's happening. Wonderful. I love that people can learn to do that and be a practitioner yeah. of it. What if you'll just share like some of the, some of your favorite um, transformations that people have had from experiencing that work? Uh, I don't know if there's a typical outcome, but like what's, <laughs> what's, what's what, is, what would someone expect? And also like, what's the most amazing thing that, that you've experienced? <laughs> so there's been lots of amazing experiences in different ways. Um, some of them are around healing, like people overcoming illnesses, um, states of anxiety that have plagued them their entire life, um, like being in a really restrictive frame of mind and coming through the veil of that and feeling a new sense of presence or, you know, capability uh, in terms of their, their human experience, um, those kinds of things. They always touch me deeply because they're, they're simple, but they're, the, some of the most profound because they're so transformative like you know if a person is plagued by anxiety and it's limiting them in their life in all kinds of ways to to break through that energy and recalibrate the energy that's stimulating that perception of things is life it's liberating like a person feels like they've reclaimed their life and they've been able to overcome something that was really limiting in the most profound way and so things like that are always really beautiful when people have physical healings like diseases they've been working with and they move through the an energy that allows them to kind of restore enough balance to overcome that physical experience that's always really um, empowering but the the other thing that really touches me in the work is people have authentic spiritual experiences for the first time and so people begin to see light, people begin to feel vibration, they recognize their chakras and they, you know, some of these are seasoned healers who've been doing energy work for a period of time and they'll do these practitioner trainings and they'll say, I have never felt anything like this. And they'll be working with someone and they'll see the guide of the person, they'll see energetic things, they'll see the Syrians or the light beings helping us in the sessions and so on. Mm -hmm. And all of that is really, really new to them. And so as people make that discovery, they have those aha moments and you can really see the, the beauty of the soul as that awakens <laughs> when someone has that kind of an experience. Um, but then the other thing that happened was I was in the very first training, I, when I started to develop the work, I had it in my mind, of course, that most people who would be attracted to do the training are healers. They're people doing healing work. You know, they have practices and these types of things. But it was a real unusual array of people. There were about half the class were practitioners of energy forms in one, in one form or another. And then everybody else did something different. Like I had um, someone who was a hairdresser. I had someone who was an air traffic controller. There was an engineer who built bridges and things <laughs> like that. So there were really peculiar backgrounds to be coming to the work. And I didn't understand it at the beginning. But I had an email from a lady after the training and she said, you know, John, I didn't know why I was coming to do this work, 
but she said it was so strong in my heart. Like I had this heart call, I could not resist it. It was a choice I had to make. And so I made the commitment and I signed up for the training and, but had no idea what I was doing here. And so she said, I kind of sat quietly and I went through learning the technical aspects of the work and all that stuff. And it was great fun. And I had, you know, really unusual experiences and that was all amazing. But I didn't know how I would bring it to life because I wouldn't know, I knew I wasn't going to be doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with people, but she said, I'm a teacher. And she said, I work in a classroom of grade one. So in Canada, that would be like six-year-olds or, you know, people, kids that are just kind of starting in primary school. And she said, my class was chaos. She said, the kids were so energetic and they're creative and they're off on all these tangents. And I didn't have any sense of how to hold the energy in the space to create a constructive classroom. But she said, since I've done the training, she said, I begin every morning with a meditation and I attune to my own DNA and I attune to the template of the work. And she said, the experience in my classroom has totally transformed. And she said, because I feel like I'm meeting the kids on the vibration at where they exist. <laughs> and it was really a revelation because we talk about the new kids, the crystal kids, the rainbow kids, all these kinds of things. But she felt as she made the adjustment in her own energy, she knew how to interface with these new kids being born. And so her classroom became a really creative space where she knew how to be with the kids and how to inspire them to learn and how to be creative. And so I just kind of saw that as an unexpected application of the energy in the work. And so when things like that happen, it really inspires me because I realize despite what I do understand, it's still little, <laughs> there's so much more to learn and, and discover. And so every time the work takes a twist like that, um, it, it, it just inspires me magically. And so some of those types of things, I guess, is what I would put on that list. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, there could be a whole teacher training for teacher, teachers that teach students. And exactly. small children. <laughs> um, that's awesome. I love that. And um, I, I want to make sure that we have time to talk about the Syrian Blue White Collective. Mm -hmm. um, that's such a, that's a potent part of your work and fascinating. So I'd love to hear about that. Sure. So the, the Syrians came to me in the meditation in 2019. And they came not as a physical form, they came as a light form, they came as a ball of light in a meditation. And then they kind of dissipated from a ball of light and took the form of light beings. And they kind of stood in front of me as a, an array of beings. And they told me that they've been mystically behind all of the work and the things that have been developing, but in a, in a, obscure kind of a way it wasn't time for them to speak openly or to you know necessarily to reveal that they were part of it and they said the work had to kind of develop and take its own process but now it's time for us to begin working with a group of people for transmissions and so they wanted me to start doing monthly meditations to take people into transmission experiences where they could receive energetic activations that they're, they're helping us with. And so they reveal lots of things about their nature. You know, they said they're a star civilization. They work in quantum DNA and healing systems that are advanced to our human understanding of healing. And that they're really connected to this work because of the nature, of course, of what the work is all about. And that they've been part of the Earth's evolution since the very beginning. And they've been here both in physical body and in consciousness ways through eons of time. And they're very present now on the planet and kind of making themselves a bit more known because of what's happening on the planet. So that's kind of the essence. I, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it's the essence of what they convey. And so they, they are so intimately connected to the work. Like when we do the sessions, when, we, when practitioners train and do the attunements to become practitioners, the Syrians are a big part of that. They come in the meditations and you really feel them and you, some people will see them and they work with us energetically to help us integrate these energy changes. And when we talk about the energy changes, of course, it sounds wonderful to be receiving these energy upgrades and attunements, but there's, there are certain challenges to it as well. It's not always easy. 
And there are some kinds of side effects or ascension symptoms that you can undergo as you integrate energies. And they're there to help nurse us through that and to teach us what we need to know to go through that transformation in a really um, as graceful a way as possible and yet as an empowered way as possible. And so they work in the work of unity field healing. When a practitioner is doing a session with a client, for example, you'll feel their energy presence in the work, the way it unfolds. And they're also with us in the transmissions that are done every month. And the transmissions are a, a kind of a, they're connected to the unity field healing work, but they're a separate entity, I guess, in another, on their own right. And uh, there's been a, a series of them since September of 2019 when they take us into transmissions that have a focus around a certain aspect of ascension energies. And so there's transmissions that talk about connecting with the crystalline grid, introducing us to the quantum energy of the sacred elements, um, as key ascension activations of the diamond light body and all this kind of stuff. So every, every transmission is a little unique and they run in a series that take us on a journey, if you will, and help us integrate the energies of the ascension process. And so, uh, and so they're behind that as well. And so they're, they're they, the interesting thing about them is they're not just here for information, like a lot of channeled information, of course, is information, it's delivered, it's presented, but there's a real hands-on aspect to the way they've come into this work because they actually participate with us and they're, it's a relationship that we develop with them in doing the work. And when you realize, if you just take a step back for a minute and realize what's happening there, we're learning to work with light beings. We're learning to work cooperatively with light beings for our own benefit. And uh, when I just pause and reflect on that, it, it moves me so deeply because you know, when you understand what's ha really happening there, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, wow. And uh, so it's beyond theory, it's kind of experiential work, like we're learning to work in this realm and cooperatively with multidimensional realms. And that's really magical to me. Oh, yeah. I love that you're facilitating that and then making that available to people and then they're sharing it. So it really is this huge ripple effect, um, making that energy available to yeah. the planet. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, we are already at the end of our time, oh, time wow. flies, um, in these conversations, but you have a, an interesting gift that you're doing. It's a contest. Do you yes. want to share about that? Yeah, of course. So what I always love to do, uh, Rochelle, is to make the work available to people. So the sessions of Unity field work actually are in, they exist in an audio format. And so when I'm speaking at events and there are new people that are new to the work, I create a contest so people can enter the contest and three people will be chosen spiritually random <laughs> to receive the work. And so they'll be sent full access to the healing program. So people can submit their entry and then you can enter more than once if you like, <laughs> if you're really attracted. And, uh, and uh, then the contest will be drawn uh, in about a week or two after that presentation. Oh, great. Wonderful. Thank you for, for sharing that and for your generosity. And so people can sign up for that and maybe win the, the work. Yeah. And then also <laughs> if somebody, if somebody wanted to see your transmissions or join those transmissions, where do they go for that? So the work, um, everything related to unity field healing and the series and the transmissions is all on the unity field healing website page. So it's unityfieldhealingaltogether.com. And at the top there are, there's a tab bar where you can go into different sections of the website. So there's unity field healing, practitioners training, uh, sessions, uh, a practitioner's listing, an international practitioner listing. And there's a section on the Syrians. And under that, there are all the recordings of prior meditations are there. The way the transmissions occur is there's a teaching that it's a three hour program that takes place. And the last hour is a meditative transmission. And I make all of the transmissions freely available to people after the events so that they can do the energetic part of the work. And people can subscribe to attend the events. And then you, there's a, a fee for that. It's $29 per transmission. So people can register for the full teaching and then 
participate in the transmission as well. There's a light language transmission that's specific to the attendees and people can buy the previous full transmissions as well. So they've been recorded since the fifth one and they're all freely available. The, the people can uh, purchase, uh, if you will, the historical full teaching transmissions as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of that's available there under the Syrian. So you'll see the, the tabs to do all that stuff. Wonderful. Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure having you. It's fascinating. Everything you've <laughs> shared is so interesting. I really appreciate it. It's really been my pleasure too. And uh, so thank you for the opportunity to speak and to get to know you a little bit. It's been really a delight, I have to say. And a big thank you to all the listeners too. Mm. my heart. Likewise. And everyone watching and listening, thank you for tuning in. Namaste.